a hearty good afternoon to everybody. All right, so uh, there's a game going over time. I've paused my TV. So um, we're going to do a quick little news of the day video here. I want to get this done. Then I can review the first game. I've got a board set up for games two and three. It's a 15 day, 15 game day. So do my best here. So Velarde is cleared to return tonight against the Ottawa Senators. Winnipeg's been on a slide. I think getting Velarde back in the lineup is exactly what this team needs. They need a little bit of uh, oomph, and he can provide that for them in the goal scoring department. So hopefully Velarde is 100%, and he can do that for them. Uh, Mangiapane, add him on the preview board. I don't think he's getting a goal tonight because he's not in the lineup. Now it's an undisclosed injury, and I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't even understand why you'd have an undisclosed injury for when your team isn't going to make the playoffs and. I, I don't know that it matters as much. Like, I kind of get the cloak and dagger around injuries when your team's fighting for a playoff spot, but when they're not, you've only got a few weeks left in the season. But at any rate, you do you, Calgary. Um, and Manjapani's considered unlikely to play Tuesday either. So it doesn't sound like it's day-to-day -day, because that'll be three games. That's about a week. So at any rate, Manjapani won't be playing for the Flames, who, again, not really in a position where they're running, making a run for the playoffs. Anyways. Mitch Marner's on LTIR. Now, the Toronto Maple Leafs have done this retroactively, so they could take him off LTIR tomorrow, and it's only been done so they can call up Rafai. Rafai's been called up, and they could not call him up unless they placed Marner on LTIR. So Rafai probably goes back down tomorrow. Marner comes off of LTIR tomorrow would be my guess. Uh, he was at practice today. He's just not ready to come back into the lineup as of yet. So... Uh, Toronto without Marner, they've been all right, uh, and getting Marner back, I would think, would make him even better. Uh, New Jersey Devils news, I'm, I'm not sure, like, this has been reported various places, I thought we already knew this. Uh, Travis Green confirming that Dougie Hamilton, very unlikely to return before the end of the season. My guess is this is including if the New Jersey Devils somehow made the playoffs. Uh, it's a torn pec, a torn pectoral muscle takes a while, ask Cody Rhodes. So, yeah. Uh, Dougie Hamilton not likely to return. Bastion's considered to be likely to return. Uh, getting Nathan Bastion back in the lineup definitely would help the fourth line. But uh, yeah, it looks like for New Jersey, uh, they're going to be without Hamilton. But again, I, I felt like we knew this. Like at the time that injury took place, we're like, well, he's out for the rest of the season. But here we are. So just, just confirmed and all that. Uh, Petrangelo could play tonight for Vegas. That's bad news for everybody. Because Vegas has been hot lately. They've won, what is it, four or five in a row. Uh, he has missed six straight with illness. So he's been out. Uh, now he's getting ready to come back into the lineup. And so if he does play tonight, that just that just makes Vegas better. Vegas is against... Oh, yeah, that game's coming up. <laughs> that game's next against Minnesota. <laughs> Wake up, Shannon. So he could play in the game that's about to start in like 20 minutes. At any rate, uh, yeah, getting Petrangelo back in the lineup obviously would help the the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Nick Sealer uh, is going to play for the Philadelphia Flyers. He's missed 11 straight games. Huge return for Philadelphia with him in the lineup. Look, they've only won three of their last 10. Getting Sealer in the lineup, he was the league leader in shot blocks at the time he got hurt. So, yeah, getting Sealer back in the lineup could be huge for a Philadelphia Flyers team that needs him. Uh, so, uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, Fantilli's kind of being ruled out for the rest of the season. Uh, he's been out with a lacerated calf since I think it's late January. Uh, and his, his, his recovery's been slow. And obviously with Fantilli seen as a future franchise player for the Columbus Blue Jackets, you don't want to rush him back. You want to make sure he's 100%. So it looks like he won't be back over the next three weeks, which is about all we got left in the regular season, right? Regular season ends on the 18th. So uh, don't be surprised when over the next couple of weeks you start hearing more and more of, well, this guy's not coming back this season. This guy isn't either. It's just the amount of time we have left isn't very much. Uh, this one's interesting. Marc-Andre Fleury is open to staying with the Minnesota Wild next season, not necessarily retiring. I will be interested to see if, if his interest in returning is mutual. If the team says, you know what? Yeah, we'll give him a shot because they have Wallstead in the AHL who is envisioned as being the future starter for the team. So do you give Flurry another year or do you say, nope, it's going to be Wallstad's net and go from there. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.